my name is Maddie and I work with Therapeutic and Inclusive Recreation Services with Mecklenburg County Park and Recreation. Welcome to our first episode of Paint Along. Um, I'm excited to walk you through this um, 20 minute episode where we paint this awesome landscape scene of a sun setting over some mountains with some pretty flowers at the foreground. Um, you will need a couple things, and that includes, I've got a little cup here of water, I've got a couple of paper towels to wipe my brushes on, and of course my brushes. We have some that are larger than others, some really, really skinny ones, um, some narrow, some wide, this fan one, whatever you have, we can make it work, um, but a variety is always great. On top of that, I've got this sponge, but if you have a kitchen sponge or you just brushes is fine, um, but I will be using this in the painting today. I also have a paper plate here where I blend my colors together that I'll be using. And then I have a variety of paints. Um, you don't have to have every single one that I have, but um, what I've got going on here that you'll definitely need is at least your black and your white. And then some orange, we got some blues, yellows, greens, etc. Um, but you can certainly make what you have at home work with some blending and different methods there. But um, I'm very excited that you guys are tuning in today. I hope that you'll subscribe to this YouTube channel and follow us on social media for updates on any future virtual programs and other awesome things we have going on. So let's all take a breather and get in our artistic state of mind and kind of we can start painting and imagining that you are on this trip to the mountains where the sun's setting the air is crisp and we can sort of just let our mind wander and relax as we paint this awesome scene together thanks again for tuning in let's go ahead and get started okay so we are going to start with our um sunset sky so I'm going to get out a big brush and start um, putting out the colors that I will need. So we're going to start the top of our sunset with purple and then it'll probably fade into fuchsia so it doesn't matter if they end up touching on the plate. Um, we will need orange and yellow. I have a bright yellow and a dark yellow that, oops, I'm going to use. That one came out runny. And we will also definitely need some white. Okay, we are ready to get started with the sky. So I'm going to be using this larger brush just so I can cover more ground. I start with our dark purple and just kind of do the top corners of our canvas. And we're going to already blend some of the fuchsia in just to make sure everything blends together. We don't really need anything too solid in this sky since um, the sun's setting, every area is a little bit different and gets brighter towards the sun. Moving into a little orange, I'm just using the same brush so that the colors continue to blend together. Add more fuchsia because that's a little too orange for my liking. Just keep adding whatever color you want to get it towards the sunset that you're envisioning. Um, now I'm going to add a little bit of white to tone down the orange a little bit as we get closer to sort of the sunnier area um, where more light is coming off so we don't want it as dark as the rest of the sky. 
So that'll make a nice area to put our sun after this is dried a little bit. Now I'm adding a little bit of yellow to my brush to blend in with this orange. So we're getting like a little fiery look. Get it in there with the white. We're gonna keep blending it down. Using my brighter yellow. You can really make this work with whatever colors you have, um, but the more the merrier. And then the sky sort of gets a little pinkier again as we get closer to the mountains that we're gonna paint. But again, it's your sky and everyone's will probably look a little bit different and that's what makes it so awesome. I'm gonna keep adding white in the middle because once we put that sun in there, it'll always be brighter coming down. I'm gonna add a little more yellow just to give it that glowing effect before we get to our mountains. Okay, so we might come back to that a little bit if it's not quite how we want. Like I might add a little bit more white over here. But just keep playing with it and blending the colors because this is sort of the fun part. Okay, so we'll again come back and add to that as we see fit. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start making the mountain that is in um, the farther away mountain. So it's less visible from our perspective on this one. So I'm going to use, um, I think, a little bit of this light blue I have. And then just add some black nearby because we want it to kind of be like a blue smoky gray. Okay. So just get a little blue on your brush, a little black, and kind of blend together, see what you like. Um, I don't like anything too solid because it starts to blend the more strokes you do on the canvas. But hopefully this is dry enough and we will go for it. mine a little bit bluer so I'm trying to add more blue to my brush and less black for more of that smoky in the distant look. Um, but another mountain will come in in front of it and that's why I'm not carrying it all the way across the canvas. do. I'm just going to get most of the paint off my brush there because I might use it again. So for the mountain a little bit closer up, we are going to make it even darker because um, in this picture the sun is behind the mountain so this one is a little more visible because there's more light shed on it. The one closer to us is sort of shadowed so it's much darker. Um, we don't want it to be pitch black, but we want it to have a lot more black than this mountain. Sure, it's the skyline there. And your 
crowns can be whatever shape you really like. Um, each person will probably look a little bit unique. And I'm just going to fill it in a little bit as we work closer to the foreground. Okay, so as we keep working closer and closer to where the perspective of the painting is, we start to see a little bit more light. Um, so we're going to go towards more of shades of green now, and then we're going to eventually add our flowers that are closest to the viewpoint of this picture. So next I'm going to pour a little bit of our green on my plate. And for... The area right below this darker black mountain, I'm going to also use the same brush that has the black in it so that my brush is kind of dark um, so that the green will come off a little bit darker than it does straight out of the tube. So, oh, too dark. So when that happens, just try to get some paint off your brush. If you also have a napkin, you could definitely use that. I'm gonna get some of that dark off, even though I want a little bit of it. And then I'm gonna go back into my green and that looks much better. Okay, awesome. So now I'm just gonna start kind of blending it forward, giving the painting a little bit more texture. As we get closer to the bottom of our canvas. So now our green can start getting a little bit lighter, a little bit brighter, less black in our brush as it gets closer and closer. And the reason I'm making this more textured is because we're gonna add our, um, flowers at the front and we're going to need as since the perspective is from here um, we're going to be able to see the stems of the flowers and some of the petals more clearly so this area is going to also have another layer of um, stems and grass that we're going to use like a finer brush for just to give it more detail I'm going to even add a touch of white and see how that looks. It's a little pastel -y. So maybe I'll just add some yellow to my green and see how that looks for me. Okay, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Still getting some of that black in my brush, but that's okay. I'm trying to put more of the bright yellow at the bottom and then fade it to the darker green as we go up the painting. It's looking good. Okay, cool. All right, so if you're satisfied with it, we are going to move on to using sort of a skinnier brush um, something more narrow and thin that we can do some of our stems with to show some of the foliage that's in the front 
Um, so I'm just going to use the same green I had with um, a couple dips in my bright yellow just again to make it pop a little bit more as the front is much more visible and clear than the fine details that would be back here in the mountains. So you can kind of just do, you can do big ones right now. They don't have to be super narrow strokes. And then we'll come back with a maybe even thinner brush just to show even more precise detail in this front foliage area. And if you don't like the bright yellow, just go over it again, maybe with a splash of green. But once we add our flowers, that will get covered quite a bit. Okay, I'm going to move on to a slightly even more narrow brush right now and um, try to get even more specific with these little pieces of um, grass and stems to our flowers. Especially down low that would technically be closest to the viewer, so it would be more precise. I just got a little bit of white on my brush too, just because since the sun is setting, there might be, you know, some touches of light happening down here. Everything should kind of flow together. Okay. Almost there. Just trying to make everything blended. Okay, cool. So from here, um, I am going to use um, a sponge from like a basic art store, but um, it also works if you have just like an old kitchen sponge at home you could cut into a cube or um, this brush works just fine, which I will use in a little bit as well. So I am, let's see, I'm going to add a little bit more of the fuchsia to my plate in the middle so I don't hopefully touch the other colors too much. Um, but I also want some white because we want to add some texture. Again, nothing in nature is probably one solid color, so we don't need to use just one color right now. All right, so I'm just gonna dip it in here. And then the first dab is probably gonna be a little bit too strong. So I'm just gonna use another napkin and kind of do a few blots before I take it to the canvas because um, we don't want any giant blobs on our canvas. So I'm actually gonna start at the front because I think I have more paint on my sponge and the bigger flowers are at the front. Um, and it'd be best if this was completely dry, but I think we're going to be able to forge ahead. So here we go, adding some flowers. So they're not too big. Might be able to dip it farther back. Just lightly dabbing the far away areas because those flowers would be really, really tiny from the view. Got a little bit in my mountain, but it's okay. This isn't like a perfect, accurate representation. Okay. I will use this awesome fan brush now, um, just to show you another method. And I'm gonna actually put a little bit of purple in my brush too, just to make it a little more fun. So just like we did with the sponge, I'm kind of just using this in fun ways. And with a little bit of paint on my brush, I can do the far away ones since they're just gonna be tiny, tiny dots at this point. I'm trying to make um, some areas a little more highly concentrated just because 
out in nature, the flowers are probably, you know, grouped together in certain bunches and then a little bit lighter in other areas. Got a lot of purple going on in that corner. That's okay. And we're kind of drawing in the same colors of the sky into the front with the flowers, which I really, really like. Okay, I'm gonna go back to using my sponge and just kind of make them a little bit bigger and fuller up at the front. Try not to get my sponge in any of the other colors. <laughs> Gonna dab it again. Okay, kind of depends what you like. If you like that heavy, heavy look, like there's a lot of flowers, it's totally up to you. Keep adding some light touches in the back, and I think I'm gonna actually go in with this. A uh, pretty small brush um, for some more flowers closer to the front. And depending on what kind of flowers you wanna do, I'm just gonna add some petal-like shapes towards the front. Just to acknowledge that the flowers are much bigger in size in the area in the bottom half of the canvas closer to you. And they get smaller towards the back. And again, I'm not really drawing exact flowers. I'm kind of just doing abstract shapes of petals. I mean, really just dabbing around, filling in where I see fit. Trying to make clusters in certain areas. And then maybe adding some more purple, whoops, in the background area. So we got a lot of purple in the front. Cool. Okay. Moving back to our skinny brush that has a little bit of the um, yellow and green, I'm going to go back through and add some more um, little pieces of grass or the stems to the flowers, whatever you see it as, but we don't want to lose those um, completely now that we went back over with all these flowers. You can even paint a couple leaves here and there. Whatever you see fit. A couple pieces of grass. A tall weed in front of some of these flowers. It's not going to be perfect, but that's what makes it so cool. Okay. come back to that but I'm gonna give it a break for now and let's see if you got a clean brush left um, we're gonna go back and add like a sort of a white yellow white Sun in this lighter area that we made for it so I'm gonna dip my brush in my white maybe add a touch of the bright yellow but I want it mostly white so let's see if you don't like it, you can always go back over it. That's the beauty of painting on a canvas. So I think that sounds a little bit better than I really wanted it to be, <laughs> but it's okay. I could always paint over it and blend the background again and do it again if I really, really felt that way. But I think that I'm just gonna roll with it. So um, from here, I'm just gonna add a little bit of the color that's on my brush to the mountains. Um, the best that I can off the edge, just because I imagine that the sun is going to be, you know, even though this is sort of in the shadow, um, reflecting a little bit of bright light on the edge, just like a glimmer. Probably a 
from it over this way. And then if you want, this doesn't always turn out great, but I'm gonna, I'm dipping my brush in some water. I'm actually cleaning it completely because I now have a little bit of gray from the mountain in my brush and I don't want that. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and get this white with a teensy bit of yellow in it. And I'm gonna quickly dip in my water because I want this um, to be a little bit runny. I don't want it to be like so solid. And I'm gonna, I'm going to just add some rays coming off of here as if the sun is really, really bright. Um, but again, we will see. Okay, there we go. So it's kind of like this foggy. Just like glisten into the sky showing how bright it is but we don't want it each stroke to be too obvious. So I'm kind of going back over them and trying to get it to blend. Might even dab it a little bit. Okay. So if you like that, great. I don't know that I totally love it. Um, but again, if I didn't, I could just Maybe get a little bit of this orangey white back on my brush and just kind of blend in each direction again. But again, whatever you like is perfect because it's your painting. Um, so we got our sun, we did a little bit of our light on um, the back mountain, and I am pretty satisfied with the flowers in the front. So I think I am going to leave it as is. And the final step to an awesome painting is making sure you leave your mark or your signature or your initials, whatever it may be. I just had to clean this skinny brush a little bit to try and get some of that paint off, but I'm just gonna put an MJ at the bottom for my initials. And that was it. All right guys, well that is a wrap. I hope you like how your painting turned out and thank you for joining me through the process. Um, I certainly would like to see how y'all's paintings turned out. If you wanna post them um, on our Facebook wall or in the comments, that would be so awesome. Again, the more we paint, the more we keep practicing, the more comfortable you get. So I really hope that you'll tune in to our next episode as we change our landscape theme to something a little bit more tropical. Thanks again, guys. I can't wait to see your paintings. <laughs>